Hello folks, well here's a little video about um, using calculators and uh, what embedded systems engineers like with, uh, with calculators and I'm probably biased because this is just my experience of them and uh, I'm just going to go through them and uh, in my particular case uh, as an embedded systems engineer I do system level programming and uh, I'm also a hardware engineer and to add into the mix I also do a lot of mix signal and RF so that's my use case and the question really many are going to have is that well aren't calculators obsolete I mean after all you've got them on your desktop why on earth would you not use the calculator that's on your PC's desktop well um, I guess I'm a bit old in the tooth and of a, of a certain age but there's nothing like the immediacy of just being able to pick up your calculator and just type a few type a quick thing in and see if da 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 and there's your answer rather than having to open up the calculator on your desktop and try to get an answer and uh, so that's the reason why I'm a bit of a, a calculator lover and uh, just be assured that I don't have all these calculators out all the time this has just been part of my quest in trying to find the optimum calculator and uh, I'm going to go in from from why I've ended up uh, with the calculators that I like uh, in this video so uh, there's going to be a little bit of history um, but also uh, why I particularly like certain calculators. Now the calculators that I'm not going to be covering on here because it's my own personal preference is anything I'm not really interested in RPM, well I say I'm not interested, I do use RPM on a pretty regular basis this is actually my uh, this HP calculator, HP35S is actually the calculator that I use quite regularly um, when in the field, when I'm out and about, I use it in RPN mode and um, I'm pretty happy with using it but the stuff that I do out and about uh, is generally not sort of embedded system engineering so it's uh, more tuned to the financial industry so uh, that's why I have that one and similarly there's another HP here which I'm, I'm not going to be covering uh, this one is um, uh, an HP Prime beautiful calculator and uh, takes a little bit of time to boot up but uh, it is a really nice calculator the only problem with well problems with it is is it's meant for the classroom and um, there I find it really difficult to use from the point of view of, of uh, if you want to program it up and everything you, you the, the keyboard is just not good enough for, for that I actually find it easier to use the P, there's a PC um, emulator for this because you can use your PC keyboard with the emulator it's actually quite easy to use it there it does all sorts of stuff um, like MATLAB here you go I've got a little program here which I set up which <laughs> animates a sine wave I mean how cool is that uh, I sat on the on the uh, train the other day and, uh, and put this in when I was, well some time ago when I was trying to uh, learn how to use it great calculator the problem is is that for what you want as an, em as an embedded systems engineer is you want quick answers and uh, you don't really need to be running like this kind of thing this is the sort of stuff that I generally do in something like um, Octave uh, or MATLAB and maybe a bit of Excel as well so what I'm after is quick calculations back of the envelope stuff um, I'm not interested in uh, using a calculator as a uh, essentially as, a, as an application tool more as just an end, a means to an end to get a quick answer so we're not going to be looking at any RPN type calculators I would say both of these do RPN as reverse post notation as well as uh, your normal algebraic notation but I only ever use them in RPN mode so let's get rid of those what else am I not going to cover in this? Well, calculators like this. Um, these calculators are, uh, they use a sort of what we call nat well, VPAM or natural display. Here's another one, another Casio one. Uh, I'm not sure if I've got, there we go, there's a sharp one here. This, uh, this actually I really like. This is my favourite, um, uh, if you like, uh, uh, I think they call it DAL, oh, yes, here it's written on there, DAL calculator. Um, it's what I like about it will is some of the functionality which I will, we'll talk about later on and some of the calculators I do like. But equally I don't like having to for some reason, I don't know why, but I don't like this thing where you'd have to do 10 times sine 30 like this. I would rather do it in the old-fashioned way, and I'm going to show you the old-fashioned way. So this is a similar uh, scenario here is a similar scenario here 
Uh, one thing which I uh, put it away now, but there's uh, I've got an old uh, TI. Oh, here we go. There's a, there's a this is called a TI 36X, I think, in in uh, in the US, in in the UK, and possibly the rest of Europe. It's called a TI 30X. Same thing. Um, and there's a TI 85 here. These all they're nice enough calculators, but I I I want to be able to do what's called immediate execution and I'll show you what that is which I'm sure you probably all know about because if you've used um, the calculators that are on uh, your average computer desktop these days they have uh, what is generally called immediate execution so the next bit is is uh, what kind of things am I, am I looking for in these uh, immediate execution calculators well um, We'll go through some of the things, but uh, for me, we must have something, we must have hexadecimal. That's an absolute definite scenario. We have to have hexadecimal in there. Uh, if you're doing programming uh, at a system level, if you haven't got some means of uh, using hexadecimal, then you're probably wasting your time. Uh, engineering mode, so that means uh, we need to have be able to look at things in uh, um, uh, micro, uh, milli, uh, kilo, mega, down all the way down to femto and pico, and all the way up to giga and terra. You want to have a means of being able to do that, rather than you having to scratch your head. Now, most calculators provide this function uh, functionality, but I'm going to go back to a little history because um, uh, one of the things that uh, that I did when I was younger was uh, I was I think a lot of us of, of that particular time, which was in the um, in the early mid 70s we had uh, we were looking at calculators and uh, this was actually this wasn't my first calculator uh, this is a, a Commodore PR uh, 1000 this one uh, was hopefully you can see that uh, this PR 1000 was actually uh, my um, calculator I used at university and uh, I like this calculator a lot. It, it was pretty good. It was programmable because for some reason back then we all wanted a programmable calculator. But uh, it has direct entry, so what I can do is I just do 1 plus 2 plus 3 equals, so it adds it up as you go along. But what it, what it doesn't do is if you did something like, um, I don't know, uh, if I did 1 plus 2 times 3, the problem with that is it's not doing uh, it's not saying what's 2 times 3 and then adding 1, it's saying what's 1 plus 2 and then multiplying the 1 plus 2 by 3. So uh, it's not actually adding in any um, uh, operator precedence. So I like this calculator a lot. Um, I, I like it because it's pretty direct. Um, it's got things like direct access to the Pi button, exchange uh, X with Y, um, direct uh, entry into memory. What's not so good is things like the hours, minutes and seconds. Now some people don't know why I go on about hours, minutes and seconds, but uh, one of the, the benefits of hours, minutes and seconds and having a decent way of being able to uh, enter information in hours, minutes se and seconds is that if you're doing timesheets and uh, certainly uh, these days accounts love timesheets, so uh, just be aware of that. Um, so if I put in do an hours, minutes and seconds calculation on here, it like a lot of the Casios as well that are way beyond this one in terms of uh, they're, they're more, much more modern they don't all have a reasonable way of, any, of being able to add in hours, minutes and seconds what they do is they convert it into a decimal and um, then uh, you add, on, add, up, add, them all, add the values up in decimal and then you have to convert them back to hours, minutes and seconds and a bit like that. Uh, one of the nice things about this calculator as well is, is it's got some uh, conversions on it like inches to centimetres and um, uh, which uh, not a big deal because I think most of us know how to convert inches to centimetres and back again but sometimes it's kind of nice to have. Um, that's actually something which is missing on a lot of the Casios for some reason, in fact most of the Casios of the sort of era that I'm going to be looking at, uh, which are the immediate um, entry um, calculators, um, they have this uh, problem where if you're entering stuff in um, they don't, you don't have a means of being able to, to do the um, uh, the unit conversion. Let's say this, you know, typically an inches to centimeters would be a, a very common one that you'd use. So if you're laying out a printed circuit board, for for example, you're going from uh, mils to millimeters uh, all the time. So uh, that's, that can be kind of handy to have. 
Um, the other thing is, as well as the exchange X with Y and Pi and root X, is nice to be able to have like 1 over X as a direct entry thing. Um, this is an interesting calculator because uh, it doesn't have a hyperbolic um, button. A lot of calculators have a hyperbolic uh, button on them, which I think is a complete waste of a button. Um, again, this one's programmable. It's, it's a reasonable calculator, but it doesn't have the uh, operator precedence uh, in it. So that's good. But now, something that came before then was this. This is uh, an interesting calculator. It's, this is more of, a, of an interesting piece than a real sort of, of any use to anybody really these days. Uh, but this is a navigation, a Commodore navigation, flight navigation. Okay, okay, but some really nice functions on here, and I'll show you the best one, and that's for doing um, hours, minutes, and seconds calculations. So, if I let's say I wanted to add 12 hours and 30 minutes, and I wanted to add one hour and 50 minutes, I can do that now. That's fantastic, that's right out of the box. This calculator, I don't know how old it is, probably 40 years old. I would say. Uh, it's got this lovely vacuum fluorescent display as well. Um, but amazing that they can do that. Um, why is that missing everywhere on, on, on so many calculators? Uh, another bit here is as a direct entry of the x squared, 1 over x, exchange x with y. Um, unfortunately pi and root x you have to use uh, the function button to get on it. Uh, but other than that, it's a pretty good calculator. It's got a couple of memories on it. And I don't like the way the brackets are shifted up here, but bear in mind this is one of the first calculators to even have uh, brackets on it. So that's a, a, com a common old calculator, which is just a, an interesting one. And you think that, well, okay, they've done that, and then they, they, they came out with uh, this calculator, which isn't turning on at the moment. Oh, there it is. Um, this uh, this is a 4190R, I think. Um, this is a non-programmable uh, Commodore calculator. It has the beautiful hours, minutes and seconds thing, so I can take 12 hours 30, and I can add on to that one hour, say, 25. And there we go, it comes up with the answer there. Uh, but what this doesn't have, it doesn't have an exchange X with Y button, it has some interesting other features in it, but to be honest with you, most of these buttons are of absolutely no use to your average engineer. So, you know, your Poisson distributions, of, you know, a factorial has no use. Oh, I've just seen the X with Y button. Do you know what? I've been searching for that all day, but it does have an exchange X with Y button. Um, factorials have no, no good to you. Anything with hyperbolic, as I mentioned earlier, no good. Um, there's things like slopes and intercepts. To be honest with you, you know what, as soon as you're doing integration, slopes, intercepts, Gaussian, all of this stuff, it's just so hard to com to configure the calculator up to use it. You j just open up Excel and do it in that, or MATLAB or something. Don't, uh, just don't bother with it on a calculator, it's not worth it. However, having said that, this, this even has uh, uh, complex um, arithmetic on it as well, so you can do some uh, complex multiplication and, and so on and so forth. Nice, it's got direct 1 over x on it and x squared, but again I have to um, use the um, uh, function button in order to be able to access the square root of uh, x, which is such a commonly used function, it's a little bit frustrating. Not bad, it's got a full set of uh, conversions down here as well, which is pretty nice. Um, so, yeah, I like that. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a nice calculator, got nine memories if you need that. But it's LED, and of course the batteries, uh, they're rechargeable in here, but uh, they only last like two or three hours or something. So that's, uh, that's that. I, lo I love this calculator, but... Oh, the other thing is, is that n neither, none of these Commodore calculators that I've shown you have operator precedence in them, so um, if, again if I do on here like 1 plus 2 times 3 the answer will be 9 and really we want it to be 7, so there we go. Okay, so those are the Commodores. Now, <sighs> next, oh, so this is an interesting one, this is a TI-59. Now when I was at school, when I was a lad, this was 
every boy's dream, every nerdy boy's dream. This is um, a Text Instruments for Gamble 59 and uh, this has got a mag card reader in it. Uh, this is in really good condition actually, I'm, I'm pretty glad to have this. Not that I use it, but the, the other sort of really neat thing about this is that this has uh, this has one of the early calculators uh, that used infix as opposed to um, RPN or postfix notation, i.e. direct entry, um, sorry, immediate entry, um, was that you, if you um, add, did the 1 plus 2 times 3, you get 7. And uh, this was quite something at the time because, of course, it's having to do quite a bit more work behind the scenes to be able to do that. And um, it's uh, something that uh, is obviously... Uh, this was actually one of the reasons why the R people who like RPN calculators uh, were big proponents of it in the beginning because they were saying, well, you know, with, if I've got RPN on my calculator, I don't need brackets, all the... Um, operator precedence is dealt with but you've got to remember that all the brackets and the operator precedence is being dealt with because you're thinking about it and rearranging your uh, your algebraic equations in your head to in order to be able to fit into a postfix notation world there's a little bit of that that you have to do with the uh, with these uh, immediate entry calculators particular ones that don't have operator precedence uh, but I'd say that um, as soon as they got the operator presence on there, it was a sort of mm, a tough, tough cookie to crack with RPN. Um, so there you go. Okay, so this is a nice calculator. What I don't like about this is, is I quite often find myself trying to search for functions on on the on it, and uh, uh, also it's too easy to to leave it switched on. I've done that a couple of times, and I've um, of course found it's completely flat as a pancake. Uh, when I do so, uh, so there's also no exchange x with y button on it, which for me is quite an important function um, when you're sort of doing a, a not even a really fairly mediocre, not I wouldn't call it trivial calculation, but being able to exchange your two um, operands around um, is quite a, a useful bit of functionality. So that's nice, but again, a bit of a museum piece, um, but. This was a sort of, sort of calculator that I actually learnt on, so that's why I like it. Now I'm going to go do something a little bit different here, and I'm going to go straight into current day now. Uh, this is a, a direct entry, um, sorry, immediate entry calculator, and if it's an FX82. I think it's called something else um, uh, outside of Europe. Um, but uh, it's a pretty nice calculator. I do like it a lot because it's so small and it's got... Um, let's see, we've got the uh, got this uh, degrees, proper degrees, minutes, seconds uh, entry, so I can add one, da, 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 one hour fifty, and it will work it out and present it to you in um, hours and minutes. So again, for your timesheet entry, folks, awesome. But the biggest problem with this calculator, and with all of the other calculators that I've um, shown you so far, there's no hexadecimal. You, if you can't do hex on a calculator as an embedded systems engineer, forget it. Love, otherwise, lovely calculator, but I'm sorry, can't be doing with it. It's got everything else though, um, but you know, and it's nice and neat and small. Um, so what can I say? Unfortunate. I think that probably it's in the same realm as, as things like the base TI-30, this is a, the solar version of it, the base TI-30, when, when, I, when I was at school the TI-30 was the calculator of choice and um, that was the recommended one, and uh, which, is, which is fine, but I, I was quite surprised that after all these years, that, well okay first of all they're still selling the basic TI-30, and uh, but secondly on the basic TI-30 there's no hexadecimal on it. So again nice calculator as it is. One thing I will mention for some reason these TIs are quite slow so um, if I want to, you know, the, the typical I know it's of completely no use to, to anybody in, in engineering which is the factorial function it's extremely slow to do um, so if I do the typical one which is 69 factorial it's a bit slow Whereas if I do it on this 
wonderful little gadget. If I do that, I'm now going to find the factorial on it. Where are you? Somebody's screaming at me now saying, it's there, it's there. I can't find it. Here we go. It's straight away. Similarly, if you do like a, this is a, they use these on uh, some of these calculator tests. If you go 9 sin cos tan, and then inverse tan, inverse cos, inverse sin, you see how far how far I drift away is from 9. Uh, another nice thing about calculators that I'm recommending is that they all have 10 digits, and we'll see why that is in a moment. This one, if I do this, the 9 sin cos tan, I mean it's alright, but it's a bit slow. More accurate though, how about that? Um, one thing I'm going to say about these two calculators as well is that they are not dual supply, so they only work off um, the solar cells, so any settings and memory settings and whatnot that you've got in there, I think that's the case with this one, it's certainly the case with this TI-30. Um, so one thing that I do like to do is to have an um, engineering functionality so that means that, but I like to have it on all the time. So there we go, if I divide it by quite a bit there, you'll see that uh, it's always in multiples of three, which is my engineering functionality. Now if I switch this off, or it loses uh, power and switch it back on again, or even press the AC, uh, it loses the fact that it's in engineering mode, I just press clear. It keeps it in engineering mode, but if I press AC, it loses engineering mode. Which is a bit of a frustration, but at least it has engineering mode. On this one, I'm just trying to remember how to do this. And it's going to... Of course, I have got whatever. This will do engineering mode as well. Um, but again, oh, here it is. So, uh, 69 times... Blah, 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 blah. So let's get a nice big figure in there. Put it into engineering. Nice! Okay, let's multiply it by two. It's lost the engineering mode and I keep having to put it into engineering. Why? Don't like that at all. And this is a common theme on Casio calculators of, uh, uh, of the sort of 70s, 80s, 90s. They had engineering but it's only just for what's on the display at the current time. For almost all of them it's like that. There's a few exceptions which I'm going to go into. Okay, so that's that one. Now I went to that modern one because it's so this is so close to being a perfect calculator, but it doesn't have hexadecimal, and it's that engineering mode thing, which you know. To be honest with you, it would be nice if it also had the uh, conversions, but you know, I mean, the plus thing is is that it's got um, these uh, hours, minutes, and seconds uh, conversions on it. Um, one thing I will note, by the way, it's absolutely useless for engineers. Uh, is fractions. Nobody uses fractions. So, but all calculators for the last 30 years have got fractions on them, but it's of absolutely no use. Like the hyperbolic button, no use. Okay, so let's have a look at some other ones. This, one's, this one is actually one of the calculators that's on my desk a lot of the time. This is a TI-65, I don't know how old it is, I think it's probably mid to late 80s. And the question is, is why on earth would you have such a, a relic? It's not dual power, it's uh, just, it takes a couple of button cells and they're not standard button, well they're standard, but they're not, you know, they're not the ones that you're going to have in your kitchen drawer all the time. Uh, so it's also, it's not solar, so bit frustrating and another thing is which frustrates me because it has batteries in it is that if I if I select engineering mode okay so it keeps the engineering mode which I really like but if I switched it off and on again it loses it why it keeps everything in memory, so I've got some. I've got a program in, in. This is programmable, by the way. It's got a small program in memory. It keeps that. It keeps its uh, numeric memories, but it forgets things like that. It was in engineering mode, so I find that a bit frustrating. Other things that I like about this particular calculator are it's got loads of uh, conversions in there, which is uh, 
kind of nice, um, you know, the typical inches to centimetres. Not a big deal, the, the conversions, because most people can just do them anyway without having to refer to them. What isn't useful though, is, uh, which we'll see in a moment, is uh, having a ton of constants because most of those constants you're never going to use. And you have to, and the way that the constants are done on these um, uh, immediate entry calculators is you need a cheat sheet to be able to find out which constant is what. Well, by the time you've done that, <laughs> you might you might as well have just written down what the constant is and or commit it to memory. So yeah, so the best thing about this calculator is the hours, minutes, and seconds entry. So uh, let's do a quick calculation here now. I'm aware that we might not be able to see this very well, but we'll hopefully be able to see it. If I do, say, 12 hours and 30 minutes, and I want to add on to there, and you'll see if you can just see it's actually got the sort of, it's got degrees, minutes, and seconds, but it's we're using it for, for hours and uh, minutes and seconds here. And I want to add into that, let's say, one hour and, uh, I don't know, let's say 45 minutes enter there you go it there it's just brilliant it's so in your face um, and another really cool thing about this calculator is that it's got a timer on it so if I press this it's not very accurate but it's um, every minute it'll go up and um, what you can do is let's say you're you're timing a program and you're seeing how long it takes to do something for whatever reason uh, it's not an uncommon thing to want to do um, you can uh, either just just stop it. There we go. Let's start it again. Or what you can do is, if you want to take a split time, you can just select a memory. So I can put, let's say, do a, so. I press one there. Now I'll go into memory one. Let's just press it again. That's going to memory two. And the other cool thing about this is, is that. While it's, count, while it's counting away, I can be doing calculators, calculating things. There you go. And then I can go back to the original timer, and it's still going. How cool is that? So, handy little feature, and uh, you can use that for timing your software and whatnot. So I really like that. So other little bits and pieces that I like about this calculator uh, are that mm, a lot of the functions are in the right place like you've got square root 1 over x exchange x with y I really like to see calculators with a pi as a single button there's not many of those around um, you have to go old school for that there we go this, this one's got pi on its own uh, special button um, it's programmable this as well and it's um, what I call noddy programmable uh, like this one and and like the TI-59, it just basically remembers steps, so you'd have to get a manual out. It's reasonably uh, self-explanatory. So I really like this calculator. This one stays on my desk, uh, but it's flipping slow. So I'll, let, I'll show you how slow it is. If I do the uh, 69 factorial, for example, I should have used the timer for this, shouldn't I? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't, but there we go. I mean, that is slow, isn't it? And similarly, if we did the uh, sin cos the nine sin cos tan test, there you go. And it's not hugely accurate either. But again, it's another uh, ten plus two calculator, ten, ten digits plus two exponent. So I, I like it. It's it's good. It's nice and easy to use, but it's a little bit slow. So that's that one. Now, keeping with the TIs, what about this TI thirty six X Solar? Now, not to be confused with other in other TI thirty six whatever in. The, after with TI, they keep similar models, model numbers, and they they can be significantly different over time. Uh, so you know, some kinds are called Pro or whatever, and are very different different calculators. Now this one I quite like um, because it's almost it. This could have been so good. It again, it's a little bit like like this one. It's that it could be so good, but it just doesn't. It just just misses the point sometimes. Um, 
this has hexadecimal on it, unlike this one. It's solar, but it's not dual power. So if you've got any settings on here or memory set up, it's not programmable, but if you have anything set up on here, it won't remember it if it loses um, solar power. So, and it, it literally, if, if, I, if I close this off, it'll only be a matter of, there we go, it'll have gone. So, it's got like a little covery thing here as well, so it's clearly it's not meant to sort of retain, retain data or anything. I'm assuming it's always been like this. I haven't actually opened it up to see whether or not you can, there's an internal battery, but I'm assuming it's just a, uh, it's solar only. But it does have, it has pretty much everything and, it, and most of it's in a nice place as well. So you've got your exchange x with y, 1 over x, x squared, square root of x, they're all in the same place. So that's, that's nice. Um, it's a bit slow again, so if I do a, a, a let's say, a 69 factorial, here we go, it's not, it's, 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 it's slow. Um, one thing that's nice about it is that we can uh, add on the um, engineering, um, it'll do engineering, but it won't remember engineering through a restart, so uh, much as that's a, a really nice sort of bit of functionality, there we go, so put it in engineering mode, that's cool, but then I can multiply up, oh, of course it's too big for it, uh, uh, times 65 equals, oh, it doesn't remember, oh, I was wrong there, I thought it did, okay, um, ah, oh, probably because I pressed AC rather than CE stroke C, I remember this on this calculator, there we go, so if I do C, so C, E, that's good, but if you press A, C, all clear, it clears out your engineering mode, and also, so if you lose, uh, if it's put away in a drawer or something, uh, it'll rem it'll forget that engineering functionality. I know I keep going about this engineering thing, but I'm so flipping used to it, I love it so much, to have, to, I just, my, the calculators that I love the most are the ones that will sit in engineering mode all the time. So much as, how good, that car is great because it does almost everything, it's got the hexadecimal as well, um, it's a little bit slow, so um, as I showed before, so if you do the old 9 sin cos tan, it's a bit, bit slow, but Anyway, there we go. So nice, but again, it's not dual power either, I don't think. So, well, at least this one isn't. And the other two that I've got like this aren't either. So, okay, so let's talk about some other uh, awesome calculators and some not-so-awesome calculators. So, uh, let's see, what should we look at now? This one's uh, quite an interesting one. This is um, an FX3600 PV. It's dual, um, what do you call it, dual uh, power. So that means it's got a battery inside it and it's got the solar panel, solar panel here, so that's nice. Um, I got this calculator because I thought, oh, it's got a hex key. So um, that this is the only reason I got this calculator. I thought, it's got a direct entry hex key, so I don't have to press things like, um, this, you have to press mode zero. So let's say uh, I, I wanted to put in a hex thing. I assumed I could just press hex, put in a hex thing, and it would do it. No, no doesn't work that way you still have to press go into a special mode um, it's at the moment it's in hex so I can now do my sort of hexadecimal um, stuff like that I can switch between hex and decimal very nice all good but why 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 do I have to press the mode button it's got a dedicated button a hex button just go straight into hex I don't understand so, I kind of lost interest in this one very quickly. It's got some basic programmability functions in there. Um, it's okay. Um, oh, the other thing I don't like is that not all of the functions, are like things like the um, uh, 1 over x, you have to use a shifted thing for 1 over x, an x, exchange x with y. Um, oh yeah, um, I don't think there's a backspace on here, that's one thing I didn't mention, is that, yeah, a backspace key, now what's a backspace key? So if I go back, um, say to this one, let's put, let's put in a, oh, I didn't mean that to be a one, <gasps> awesome. Now, the backspace key, years ago, 
when I was starting to learn to calculate, it would have been brilliant because the number of times that I had to rekey the entire number in was uh, was too many. But uh, yeah, I don't believe this has got a backspace key, so you know, uh, no good. Um, and if I go back to uh, let's see, uh, load dot, is it? There we go. Um, so oh, the other thing is it doesn't have a persistent engineering mode as well so if I go it's got a straight direct button to just to go into engineering which is great but it's not um, uh, it's not persistent so if I multiply that by three it's gone again that's press engineering so again frustrating there didn't so I, I lost interest I, I mean I bought it on eBay thinking it's got a direct entry hex thing here but nah. so for me waste of time that's the FX 9600 PV so let's try another one here. Here's a uh, FX992V. I have no idea what the naming convention is for these calculators. Uh, this is an interesting one because it's a 12 plus 2 digit. It's dual power. Um, it looked like, oh, like, I don't know why, because you don't need 12 digits. <laughs> it's just, that's no value whatsoever except if you're doing the only time you need is large numbers of digits is if you're messing around between hex and um, a decibel so if I for example go into uh, hex on this calculator and I go and put in uh, 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 and then I uh, select it into decimal um, which I'm, not, I'm of course they never put them there we go All right there we go so it needs a lot of the uh, digits on there to be able to do that um, and I think if I I have a vague recollection that, that it won't go any more than 32 bits which is uh, what we're at here interesting as well on this calculator it te treats that as minus um, 2 gig some calculators would treat that as plus 4 gig um, for example this one does that. Um, if I put in hex, uh, here we go. Uh, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, and then I go into decimal. Oh no, it goes positive. It doesn't see it as negative. That's right. Sorry. If I go, let me go back into hex. I remember what I was talking about now, and I multiply that by two. Nice, and then I go into decimal. Okay, so this only really operates on positives here. Um, actually, it's an interesting one if I put in minus one and then go into hex. Okay, so it does do this. This one's quite. This one's better than I thought. Then this one uh, seems to go from. Um, uh, I think it. I think from memory it'll go. It, the limitation is is in the decimal thing. So I think it converts everything into decimal. So if I one two three four five one two three four five. Okay, so that's my large decimal fit as an integer on the display and then I go into hex okay that's what that is switch to decimal nice back into hex if I add if I subtract one oops minus one equals a bit slow as you can see good plus one back to the original if I now add one onto that I think it errors out yeah because it's overflowed on the decimal so I think it kept it puts everything back into decimal. Okay, so this is all very well, but um, and it's nice that this this has got um, all of these uh, digits on it, um, but it's of no use. The other thing that is uh, not good on this calculator um, is that it's again got these this crazy. Oh, I'm not in the right mode, am I? Here we go. It doesn't do degrees, minutes, and seconds well. Use this thing where it just shoves it into decimal. Um, this was similar to the the not this one. This is one that does it right, but uh, the i thirty six. This is crap on uh, doing uh, hours, minutes, seconds calculations. It does it in a similar way to this. It does ev you put everything in in, in decimal. It doesn't have it properly uh, displayed like this beauty does. Uh, okay, so nice having all these uh, twelve plus two digits, but come on. You don't really need it. Okay, this is a unique calculator in a lot of ways. This is an FX61F, and I bought it really because I thought, well, everybody's talking about this. Um, 
and you know it's become a bit of a rarity so I thought well I need one of these then and it's a you know reasonable enough calculator um, but I, I, oh, the, the best thing about this calculator is it's, it's got a parallel button so if I've got a 2 ohm in parallel with a 3 ohm that's what it is so I don't have to go uh, 2 1 over x plus 3 1 over x equals 1 over x it can just be done with 2 in parallel with 3 equals really nice feature oh my god I so wish all calculators had that so um, that's good but again it's got this problem it doesn't have this um, persistent engineering mode why? why? I, I, I don't understand it's got a, a, a bit of a um, it's, well programmable isn't quite right really it does have programmable functions you can program it up to do things that deals with um, complex stuff um, it's got loads and loads of uh, pre uh, built in formulas on here to be honest with you it's, it's just too hard work um, uh, I wanted to love this calculator so much but as you see I've had to post it note because the other thing is is because they haven't put the uh, things like 1 over x and x squared and, and so on and so forth as apart from square root of x as primary functions on the keys the ones that you're going to use all of the time because they haven't done that it, it's just a struggle and I've got to have a post it note here and then uh, you, uh, you, that oh I don't know so nice idea just I don't think it was executed that well and it got a hyperbolic on there give me strength I don't need hyperbolic thank you very much and of course it doesn't do well I can't even I'll press the wrong button here 12 uh, 30 uh, there you go I mean I don't like this I don't like this way of doing degrees minutes and seconds it's a shame because this one does it so well so that's that so 61F lovely calculator but you, you've got to want to use it right last one this so far is probably my most useful calculator for one reason it has a persistent engineering mode so this is the FX991D and uh, this is also uh, there was a, a range of four different calculators there was an FX570D which is exactly the same form factor as this but it didn't have um, a dual power it only ran off batteries um, there was an FX100D which ran off a double A cell which I've got sitting around somewhere and I've got it here somewhere. Here it is. Yeah, FX115D. Here it is. This is an FX115D. So you'll see that they're nearly identical um, in every way. But this is this one's quite a bit, a bit, a bit thicker. The FX115D. Now, and that's the reason why it's this one that sits out on the bench because it doesn't it takes up this tiny little bit less of of bench space so this is a calculator I really like it's, 12, it's 10 plus 2 digits it's got persistent engineering mode and I'm going to show you a little trick here look so I put 6985 it puts it to K oh how cute is that so if I multiply it up by a big number oh it's cute it's got a meg I mean that is so cool so that's quite nice to have um, for me the, the, that is the absolute it's got a, you, the way you know that it's got this it's, it's got this mode in the mode dot nomenclature it's got this engineering uh, button and uh, I think this is the only range these four calculators are the only range I'm aware of of the immediate entry calculators that have this persistent engineering uh, mode. Now you can also, when you cut key something in, so let's say I wanted, I don't know, 156 uh, 
and then I wanted to have it times 10 to something, I can say, for example, I can do uh, micro. So that shift there, and you'll see on the key there, you've got mega micro. Why well, is it going? Is that femto? Anyway, pico. Now, that's, that's nice, but how useful is it? Um, I'm not so sure because for me, by the time I've, I've figured out where where it is, I would have put in 656 times 10 to the minus 6. So, you know, I think I'm I, I'm not sure about the benefit of that. This this I like though. I think that's pretty cool. Um, it's probably unnecessary because I don't mind if it said times 10 to the 6 or minus 6. I'd be more than happy with that. This micro is just a bit of a you know wankery as somebody might say um, but also the other thing I like about this is that everything's in your face on, on there so we've got 1 over x square roots there x squared is there uh, so all of those direct functions are in there uh, which is which is nice uh, where's the x change x is y I'm not going to be able to find that now my brain's gone all right here it is, it's just here. So it's x with y is a shifted thing. So if I do 65 minus 3 shift x with y equals. So it's got all of that. Unfortunately, the x with y is shifted, as is the pi, but these ones are all there x to the y, log, log natural. They're all in exactly the right place where you want them. Um, it's got hexadecimal on it. Um, we don't need fractions, for goodness sake. Um, I've wasted a key here with the hyperbolic. Somebody else would say it's got a backspace. Brilliant, we like backspaces. Um, there's some nonsense on here which no one's ever going to use who's an engineer. Uh, but, um, oh, there is something in here. There's complex uh, arithmetic. Now, you've got to ask yourself realistically, are you really going to... Are you really going to use a calculator to do complex arithmetic? Mm, it's a push. Um, really all we're after these calculators to do is to get as a quick answer back of an envelope calculation and to be honest with you, by the time you've figured out how to use the complex uh, how to enter a complex number in here and add them together and it, it just it's life's too short you know, open up Excel open up Octave or MATLAB or something and do it in there for God's sake these calculator, desktop calculators nowadays, they're great for doing back of the envelope calculators, calculations, which is not what PC calculators are for. So the two calculators that I have on my desk all the time nowadays are these two, the FX991D, which is also the same as the FX100D and the FX570D, which doesn't have the uh, dual power, it's just run off batteries. Um, what, uh, what does it say? FX100D, FX115D, FX991D, and FX570D, that's all. Now just be aware if you go for, for the, the same numbers but with a different letter at the end of it, there can be completely different calculators, so just be aware of that. And this TI65, which is still counting away, so let's see how far it's got. Oh, oh I just switched it off. <laughs> Ah oh dear, that'll learn me. Yeah, to get this is that's actually one of the uh, slightly annoying things of, about this this calculator is that it it's oh in hex mode that doesn't help, does it? Okay, so one of the frustrating things is 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 you have to remember how to go back into it, and I remember messing around with this a couple of days ago, and I thought, oh blimey, how do I get back? I did exactly the same as I did just there, but the answer is if you go away and do some calculations whatever it might be and then you want to see what the time is this is not particularly uh, intuitive but you do recall colon and it takes you back to the uh, the timer so there you go you live and learn um, but yeah we can still do calculations and whatnot while that is still running which I think is re really neat uh, so there you go those are those are my calculators of choice for for the um, for the engineering uh, desktop or the Embedded Systems Engineering desktop. Thanks so much for watching. Cheers now.